Let's go! I'm aboard this proverbial Winnebago. We're talking about the awesome fans of Lego. So build your mock and ship it into drive. It's time for a full spotlight. Live. Hello everyone, welcome to A Full Spotlight Live. I am here with Holly Webster. Holly, how are you? I'm good, how are good. you? Good, everybody in the live chat, give us a bunch of thumbs up if you can hear us. You should be hearing us now. <laughs> they should, they should hear us now. They, the, if they, they might be check. like 20 seconds behind. Holly, how was your day? Uh, it was good, yeah. Busy working. Yeah, yeah. You haven't. You yeah. you you have a fun work. It don't you? Uh, yeah. Most 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 days. Sure. <laughs> Good. I I know a lot of people are very interested in what you do. do we'll maybe I'll ask you a little bit more about that later. But uh, again, everyone in the live chat, thank you so much. Uh, I was saying before you let us know that you couldn't hear us right away. Uh, we will have a Q&A at the end of the session. We will do the best we can to keep track of what's going on there in the, in the live chat. Uh, and uh, so thank you all for joining us. This is A Full Spotlight Live. If for some reason you're here and you don't know what A Full stands for, that's the adult fans of LEGO. That's who, this pod, uh, that's who this live stream is for. And we're hoping to encourage some people out there uh, to, to enjoy the community and to be creative and to uh, not get down on yourself. That's one thing we'll talk about, right, Holly? Not get too down on yourself when you hit those moments of, uh, of, of feeling a little bit, uh, a little bit uncreative. And, and hopefully we'll all get back to optimum creativity at some point. Holly, tell us about how you got into Lego. Oh, um, well, I'm one of those people that can't even remember when I got into it. Cause I was into it as a kid for sure. Um, uh, the funny thing is, is I don't think my parents took my enthusiasm with Lego seriously. Huh. I think, I think it's hard to know as a parent, you know, when your kid asks for toys or asks for something like if, if, you know, if it's something they're going to play with for a week and then forget about. And, um, um, even when I was a kid, Lego was, to my parents, Lego, Lego was always really expensive to my parents, so um, they refrained from buying me many. Mm. And I just remember constantly asking for them, and they would make me save up my own money, and then maybe I would get one for Christmas. But it was just this kind of like, um, you know, it, it was just frustrating to me that that I didn't have a lot of Lego to play with. Uh, but then looking back on it, of course, I can appreciate that because uh, because I had to earn them. I took very good care of them. Um, I kept them, so I still have all the sets and figures and everything from when I was a kid. Um, and uh, I've just kind of kept kept going. I guess you're probably going to ask me about my dark my dark age. No, it's, right? I mean we don't always have to talk about people's dark ages. If if you would like to share something about your dark age, you're more than welcome. I I, uh, I do find yeah. it I do find it really interesting that you I think you have a unique story as a child. Because a lot of fans of Lego that I know, either um, they had a ton as a kid, you know? I know I know a bunch of AFOLs who, like, yeah, as a kid I had a ton mm -hmm. of Lego, and it seems like that's, a, right. that's the thing. Yeah, I hate those or kids. Or <laughs> some, some people r discovered it as an adult, right? Like, for one right. reason or another, they didn't have any as a kid. But to hear that you yeah. had this, like, really you almost you know emotional struggle with it 
you know, you wanted yeah, more. Yeah, I craved it. I craved it. And you didn't have as many. Yeah, as... and you know, actually, yeah, it's kind of funny too because I remember wanting toys. I wanted like GI Joes, and I, you know, I guess boy toys. I wanted more boy toys and didn't get the quote unquote boy toys. Um, so maybe maybe that goes a little a little deeper than we need to get into mm. right now. But um, but I do think it has. Some, I remember saying at one point, you know, when I'm an adult, I'm going to buy all the Lego I want, and it became a real problem. Huh. So yeah, that's something I try to keep in mind as a parent, although my kids are sick of Lego, so it's not Lego, but it's probably something else that, you know, they're asking for that I'm depriving them of that's going to eventually be a problem. That's what I expect. Oh man, that's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I never felt like that as a kid, but I do, my sisters, my older sisters have, sometimes I wonder if those things that have to do with birth order, you know, or, 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 yeah. or seasons for families, right? Cause I, my, my sister's tell stories about how they didn't get the things that they asked for, you know, and I never felt like I had that experience, but they're much older than me. Awesome. Yeah. Holly, uh, let's see. You just mentioned something about um, your dark age. Do you want to talk about your dark ages? Mm -hmm. uh, no, that was pretty typical. Just high yeah. school and uh, yeah, pretty much just high school was, was my dark age when I don't really remember playing with Lego or toys at all. And then um, at some point in college, I think when the Star Wars line hit was when uh, I became interested again. I was uh, going to school for visual effects mm -hmm. and for computer animation. And so it was just right at that sweet spot that I was interested in um, toys again for some reason. I don't know if it was, there was a direct connection there but uh, if, or if I just never really lost interest and had more resources at that point. But I do remember in college going back down the toy aisles and buying things that some things I kept in packages, some things I didn't, but I but I definitely started picking up Lego sets again, and and building those. So uh, by yeah by end of high school, and then it just, once I had kids, it just spiraled. So that was uh, around I had like a little bit of a dark age around 08, 09 when I had my um or between 07 and 09 when I had my first kid and she was a baby and I didn't want to have a lot of little pieces around, um, and I was broke, so that helped uh, and. Again, I kind of have this longing for a lot of sets. I missed really awesome sets that came out around, around that time that I missed out on that, you know, I'm, like, mad at my child for, for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, let's see. I wanted to mention a couple things in the chat. And Nico, I think, said, oh, now I can't find it. Oh. That's a lot of chat. Hi, yeah. everyone. Oh my gosh. Hey, Aniko said, off topic, but I love your Lego studio set up in the background, Holly. It's so pleasing to look at, and it's so organized. Aniko, we're going to take a look at it a little bit closer here in just a moment. Uh, but maybe that'll be part of our show and tell time. Um, so, Holly, one more thing I want to ask you before we move on is, how did you become connected to the fan community? Um reluctantly i i <laughs> i kind of held back in in the lego closet for for quite some time i was aware of the lego community i think i started going to brick's cascade and in it's infancy if not the first year then probably the second just as a just as an attendee um so uh and i knew there there was i knew that there was a port lug lego user group um but i just i just didn't know what it was it was kind of a mystery to me of what kind of people would be involved in that? God forbid they were people like me that had this <laughs> weird interest. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I just wasn't, and I was busy. Like, it, it, you know, I, I moved here, I moved to Portland from the South. I'm originally from Tennessee and then lived in Atlanta for a while. Um, so moved around the South a bit. And there, there I, I never knew anybody that played with toys, much less Lego like me. So it was just kind of my own thing. And most of my hobbies are like that. They're just things that I get into on a whim on my own. And they're not things that I care to share with mm. anybody. Um, so, but then when we moved to Portland, uh, I became a mom pretty much right away. And so again, that kind of kept me occupied and I just never even thought about, um, sharing this escape with anyone else. So it actually wasn't until, um, uh, I posted my Coraline house or was about think, considering posting my Coraline house on ideas that I realized I should probably reach out mm -hmm. to some people that, you know, know this and understand this a little bit 
you know, just the ins and outs of how all this works. And if this is something, if, is, is this good? That was the question is like, I had never really had any, I never put anything out there. I never showed anybody anything. I didn't know if I was a good builder or not. I didn't never, had never mm -hmm. cared. So it, so I decided to show up to a lug meeting and I put it out there and asked for uh, feedback. And that was what started it all. Yeah, that's, that's, that's awesome. Uh, that's very similar to the experience I had at as well. I, at least you know co connecting with the lug uh, and not knowing. You know, you just you have those moments of like, who, who, how, how into this do I want to be, right? And and like, how how right. am I going to relate to other people that spend a lot of their free time doing this stuff? And um, and it was it was the moment that I connected with the lug that is it was just like. And I've, I've mentioned over and over again the names Ben and James and JJ and just how, you know, it was just like immediately I felt welcomed, right? And I, and I think... We have a great yeah, think, We have a really great right, luck. Right, yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Um, all right. I think I, I said hi to a bunch of people in the live chat at the beginning while our audio was muted so i'm gonna i'm gonna run back right through we've got jawa hello perry wang dave morgan hello hello ah sata bricks j uh brick lettuce hey, we've hey. got uh da, 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 da. and eco we we heard from thank you all so much for joining us glenn copeland legos for life the true dark jedi uh ep2nr will nicholson <laughs> okay let's see uh oh. Have I missed uh, Samuel Turner? I think we've. I saw Molly. Molly makes stuff up. Is in there. We got Rye Guy. Oh, this is awesome. I love this so much. Thank you for joining us. We're hearing from Holly Webster. If you've joined us since we since we began the live stream, Holly, can we dive into show and tell? We can. There I thought is. I was going to have to talk more about. Oh no, it's right. fine. You can keep talking. Okay. Um. Yeah, I thought I was going to have to talk more about what I don't have to show and why, um, but then I built something. Woo. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a little thing. Uh, I don't know if we have any Leica fans um, present. Any Leica fans? Let's see. I don't know if anyone would recognize this little guy that I threw together. Uh. Um, it's from actually the first film, my first film credit, the first movie I ever that I ever actually worked on at Leica because I didn't work on Coraline. A lot of people um, don't realize that I that I didn't work on that film. I was there, but I was working on a different mm -hmm. project. So this is from the movie um, Paranorman. This is Mitch's van that I've put together, and I kind of did it in uh, like a Scooby Doo style. Mm -hmm. So you know, the top comes off and the back opens up. Oh, rad! So I changed this all up. So you can put enough you know figures inside. So that's the next step is trying to figure out that's that's the challenging part really is trying to trying to um customize all the all the figures that's awesome so what was your role that's on, on that film uh it's the same in for pretty much every movie i'm a visual effects okay. artist so i work on the digital assets and actually paranorman was was testing the waters with that mm -hmm. because Coraline was pretty much all practical there there were of course computers used but there weren't really uh, CG assets sure. for that for that film, and so with Paranorman, this the scope of it grew so much more, and they needed so much more that they realized, oh my gosh, it's going to take us ten years to try and make this all practical. Uh, so they enlisted the visual effects team that we had there to start uh, creating um, background characters and set extensions and all that. So that was that's where I came in, and I've it's just grown. We just we're just doing more and more for each film. Yeah, well your job sounds so interesting you know i have loved the you know the the content that like it creates and the idea that a company like like can exist and do what you all do um and i know a lot of people appreciate it and especially sort of like there's a pride around it in portland area and Okay. And, uh, and and people all over the world appreciating the content. Um, so thank you for doing what you do. We I haven't I haven't talked about people's day jobs uh, on April Spotlight Live yet, but I feel like yours in your case it's it's so kind of closely connected to the kind of things we celebrate in the April community, yeah. right? So 
yeah, I mean, we're pretty much building, you know, miniatures and uh, building these worlds and we have characters and a lot of that overlaps with, with the Lego community yeah. for sure. That's that's what tugs at everybody's heartstrings, right, is telling stories and imagining things and building worlds. So, yeah, there's a lot of crossover there, I think. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. What else? What else you got to show us? What else? Um, I've got this guy over Woo-hoo! here that some of you There's Susan who just uh, recently won a Golden Globe and he got an Oscar nomination. That was from our uh, latest film that came out last year called Missing Link. And um, yeah, he was debuted at Brick Can and then I, um, I'm i gonna bring him to Brick's Cascade this year so you guys can get a look at get a look at him. Awesome. Uh, so that, that got a little out of hand. He got a little bit bigger than I was anticipating. He's amazing. <laughs> It wasn't the scale I had in mind, but uh, you know how. What, it what was the scale you had in mind? Um, well, I mean, so I wanted to build something for Missing Link, and I really struggled because I didn't think I was going to be able to pull off anything with with minifigs, and like mm. a, you know, just the minifigs themselves. I didn't think I was going to be able to customize properly to capture to capture them. So, um, so I figured I had to either go micro really small or really big. I had to either go micro scale or I had to do buildable figures. So as I started thinking about building him out of brick, it just, yeah, I think I was thinking it was going to be, um, what do you call this? The little star Wars buildable figure size. I thought it was going to be something like that is what I initially had in mind. Like, but like yeah, once the I buildable st- figures, like hero factory construction kind of scale. Okay. Yeah. 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 And then as I started thinking of, pieces it was like that little macaroni tile for his nose and then those eye um he's just so big yeah. i can't really get a close-up of he's amazing <laughs> oh he's amazing. Yeah, his, how, how tall is he his, you know oh i don't know he's probably about almost three feet okay. i think um yeah and then those eye tiles right there too so that pretty much set the scale once i started visualizing those pieces um for his face then he he just got really big uh, from there yeah. Well, Aniko said, I remember when the Leica exhibit was at the Portland Art Museum. It was incredible. So there's a there's yeah. some, you know, uh, and somebody else said, oh, uh, Dolly Lion Crafts says, I agree with Aniko. So people being impacted was- by the stuff that you do. So it's awesome. Uh, I can't wait to see. That was too. Yeah. Uh, because we're so used to seeing things just um, on our work tables, you know, covered in dust and some of it's been destroyed and totally out of context it it just looks like rubble and it was really amazing to see everything framed and you know on display and this it was just a beautiful display at, at the portland art museum and there's rumor that they're going to continue trying to do things like that good. that's good it, i mean mm-hmm. it's, it's beautiful amazing stuff that's awesome oh, and of course for Last but not least, for show and tell, of course, I've got my uh, Coraline house right there, too. Hey, there it is. I certainly hope everyone has has seen in, um, in great detail, detail online. Uh, there's lots of pictures. Uh, this all, of course, opens up like a dollhouse. And I mean, and this is this was basically my first real mock, I would say. I've, I've modded things and I've tinkered around with things, but this is the first time I've really gone to great links and put a lot of time into something with a lot of intention and um, something I, you know, obviously was really passionate about. It was just something I wanted for my own collection because I have, you know, all my modular buildings and I just wanted a pink palace to go with my modulars. And then as I got so far into it, then I realized, you know, that this is possibly something other people would be interested in as well. And it would be good uh, publicity for the studio since we don't do a lot of marketing. We don't sell a lot of toys or anything that uh this is the kind of thing i think leica fans need and want yeah that's that's awesome hey i just noticed i have i Mm -hmm. have um i have chat chat has the has the chat been popping up oh on this thing i've got it in uh there we go never mind sorry i was just distracted i apologize for that so how, how how many votes are you at on on ideas um anybody anybody want to look into that uh i'll pop over here and do it but somebody said here this would be a good time okay we'll come back to that we'll take a look at the ideas in a second it's 
thousand. I think it's creeping up to nine thousand. Oh now. man, so close. How many? Do you know how many days you have left? We'll pull that up. We'll pull that up. But somebody said, yeah. um, let's see, real quick. Uh, uh, who said it? Um, I okay. Glenn Copeland in the chat says, mm, "I spy seasonal sets next to the lunchbox." So I'm thinking, is that a good segue to give us a little more uh, view of around the studio there? Okay, yeah, while, yeah, while, so while you do that, I'm going to pull up your ideas page, and then we'll have that information for everybody. Okay. Sure. Yeah, so it's kind of interesting because we just moved into this house. Uh, so I'm in a, in a basement, in a daylight basement. And it's a really large room that I pretty much have all to myself now. That's basically why we bought this house. Um, so I'm kind of using this transition, uh, it's, it, it's like, it's like the transition between houses and it's also a transition between my style. I'm going from more collecting cause I've, I've essentially been a collector for years and years, not a, not a hardcore collector, but I just have always bought sets and built sets and are we still there? I'm sure. I'm not going back. I think you're back. Let's see. Hold on a moment. Are we good? You still there, Boone? I am still here. I can hear you, but you're do, do, do. you're back. Okay. You're back. I'm back. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Like I said, I'm in a basement. <laughs> no, it's fine. So it's fine. This my is, internet. This is fine. Yeah, internet might crap out, but uh, yeah. So anyway, so that so this is transition uh, between houses, and then this transition between my Lego style, which is going more from collecting to mocking. I really want to build more um, do creative buildings. So I've set up my area like that more. I mean, there is still a lot of display. I still want to put more sets out on display and figures. I love minifigs. I'm addicted to minifigs. So uh, there's never enough room for all those guys. Uh, but I am setting up this space more um, for building than display. So I now have um, a whole bunch of bins. You can see there pretty much the whole wall here of of bins awesome um uh, yeah so i got big bins little bins little sorters so that's all for bits and bits and pieces and things uh, the the lower bins do you take those out and move them around and use them or do you just open them to like pick pieces out i'm always curious about that because well, I'm I've just kind of I'm still kind of in the process of setting all this up. So right now I'm using that more for like bagged sets, sets that have already been okay. built um, are in Ziploc bags. And a lot that's what a lot of that is. And then some of it's actually just my son's parts okay. that were making a mess. And so they just got thrown in a bin and then the bins got stashed under there. And uh, so those are mine now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, right yeah. and um yeah so that's just kind of miscellaneous at them i pretty much everything right everything is in this state of to be sorted oh yeah seriously oh, yeah. yeah and then right down here this is kind of fun i made my own little pick a brick uh wall so i you love can see it that. i love it can you yeah. can you turn the lights off and turn them back on again you you really got me the other day when uh you when you showed me that yes <laughs> that <laughs> yeah that's cool i just think people will like that yeah i've I'm still kind of working on that too because I want to illuminate all the cubbies. But so I'm just testing the lighting for that right now. But that's double sided, so they're so uh, it's deep enough to put the cups like back to back. So um, yeah, so there's quite a few that that fit in there. And then it's you know possibly it can possibly be expanded either because it's basically just one of those Calex uh, systems from IKEA yeah. with the with the wine rack inserts. So. Um, I could always just get a bigger one, get a bigger cubby system and get some more of those inserts. And it's relatively cheap. That's such a fantastic idea. How did you land on the idea that, that pick a brick cups? I mean, what was the process there? Like pick a brick cups fit into the wine racks from Ikea. Uh, yeah, I already had a bunch of pick a brick cups like everybody else does. Uh, and then I, it was, you know, I was trying to figure out where I was going to put them as I was designing this space, where I was going to put all these cups. And, um, I remember being at our Lego store and I was talking to Davey about it. Like, I kind of want to make my own pick a brick wall somewhere in my room. That's so cool. Um, yeah. So I kind of started brainstorming it and we realized at some point that, oh, basically, you know, the cups are sort of the shape of a wine bottle. And really what I need is like a wine rack 
Um, and so I was kind of trying to figure out how I was going to build a wine rack or trying to find wine racks. And then I also had this, uh, a lot of stuff that's in here is stuff that's been repurposed, things that, you know, we, I've pulled out of, as we were moving things, I pulled out of my kids' rooms and we were changing things around. And so I had just enough kind of Ikea crap to, you know, kind of trying to hodgepodge things together. So I had this Calax system and um, was trying to figure out how to utilize that. And then that's when the light bulb went off. Like, oh, I found these wine in wine rack inserts for the Calax system. Yeah. And there you that's go. That's awesome. Uh, Glenn Copeland says, yeah. holy heck, uh, this might actually get me into an Ikea store, which I, <laughs> I think that like when I saw that, it's like, yes, like that makes so much sense. You know, he, he, okay, here's a fun thing. People in the live chat, give us in in the chat your best estimate as to how many pickle brick cups you have in your possession right now. Uh, and we'll just, yeah. it'll just be a fun, just throw out a number. Is it, is it five? Is it 10? Is it 300? Um, how many pick a brick cups, whether they're full or empty, whether full of bricks sitting over there and you haven't got to them yet, or you've sorted your bricks and you have a stack of empty pick brick cups. This is fun. Let's just see how many in the live chat. We'll see. And some of them had, had more before I actually asked for donations because I didn't even have because this is double sided this is what 16 30 there's like 32 cubbies yeah. here I didn't actually have that many cups and so I started so as I started putting my cups away I was like oh I need more cups and so all I had to do was put the call out and ask you know yeah. <laughs> ask people if they had yeah. cups to donate and I got them by the bag oh, of course of <laughs> course Dave Morgan yeah. says 20 Cody Yachtley 120 Derek Griffith 12 oh the Dark Jedi three for me good this you uh, and Aniko three. That's an interesting number. Um, Jeff says six cups. Corey says five. Will Nicholson twelve. We're all over the place here. Brixar says seventy two. Hey Brixar, thanks for joining us. Um, we've got Bristol. Yeah, look them. at that. Okay, so anyway, and people use them. I, I think it's like they're they're disposable to some people. Uh, they are storage for other people. Um, it's, it's a. It, I think it's an interesting thing. Perry Wang says he's got thirty. Thanks for. Sorry, this is seventy-two. I have seventy-two. You have cups seventy-two. Here right there now. you go. So you're you yeah. and uh, uh, if you and Bricks are, are are right, right there. He said seventy-two as well, and he says now I know what to do with them. Exactly. That's I love it. Hey, I, yeah. I'm so glad you learned something. Now the more you know, yeah. right? <laughs> and then so yeah, and all those trophas. This is the trophas system down here too. I stacked um, a wall unit on top of. The, the base unit because I was trying to get everything up to standing height. I like to have everything standing height because um, I don't sit much when I build. I don't know how you guys do that, but um, yeah, I, I'm always reaching for pieces and trying to find pieces. So I think standing just uh, hurts. So I tried to get everything up to standing height, which meant that none of the, just I wanted the way that I wanted my bins to fit in, I could fit more bins in long ways. Um, and the only tall, uh, cabinets that they had, this, the bins went in sideways, and I couldn't get as many of them in there. What are you doing, Boone? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just sharing with more people that we've got oh, a live okay. stream going on over got here. Got Sorry. Okay. So. No, nobody, nobody yeah. on the end of the stream saw that. It, you, there's, they're still got watching it. you. Okay, so that's all tro the trophy system, and then I've got these uh, Linmon, I think is the name of the tabletops on top, real nice long tables that are like 50 bucks maybe. Um, I feel like I'm doing an Ikea like <laughs> commercial right now. It's cheap guys. It's really, it's, it's affordable. So, or to some extent, and then those are all lack shelves that I've hung up above there. Those are like really great, you know, modular depth yeah. shelves. Those work really great over here. Um, I put these, uh, this is one really big room. So I've kind of divided it up a bit and put these, uh, shelf dividers in here. I wish I could remember what these things are called. Um, but they're just like shelves that go up to the, the you know, thing connects to the ceiling. Yeah. And so that gives me some more shelf awesome. space and it divides the room up a little bit. Um, Cause that's like a little loungy area over there where I've got more cabinets, more shelves. Uh, tell, tell me about your ships. And, I see you've got some ships there. You have my favorite ship. One of my, one yeah. of my all time favorite sets. What do you, what, what, what are those yeah. ships? I love the ships, the the pirate. Oh, so over here too in the Billy bookcase, you'll see like some of my classic collection over there, castles and pirate stuff over there. 
um, I, that was my favorite stuff as a kid. Pirates and castles were what I played with most. And um, I think that Black Seas Barracuda, I actually had to uh, purchase later because that was one of those sets I wanted really, really bad as a kid and didn't get. Uh, so as soon as I found one that I could afford, I, I grabbed it. This this was my Christmas present, ni 1990, yeah. right there. I think that was the year I got a uh, cargo train, nice. which was really yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a little battery, you know, the battery operated yeah. um, train. That was that was pretty special too. I don't have any of my train stuff out right now because um, that's that's really hard to find space for, yeah. right? When you start running track and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's still uh, there's still a ton of stuff that's packed away right now. But the ships, um, I just yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. They, uh, for one thing, it's they're kind of hard to find space for because of the mass, and they're so tall and take up a lot of space. So that was kind of the only only spot for right now. I had to put them because I didn't want to keep them in boxes. It messes up the sales. So I just went ahead and put all those guys out. I feel like everything's kind of temporary right now. I'm just trying to put well, stuff. Well, it looks like an awesome. Somewhere. It looks like an awesome space. Thank you so much for showing us around there. Uh, Rye guy eighty three. I, I want to talk about this. And Rye guy eighty three says. Rumor had it that Ikea and Lego were supposed to do a furniture line together. I remember hearing about that. Do you remember hearing about that? Is it? Yeah, have, that's what I yeah. heard. And nothing's come to fruition yet, so I gave up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I had to just put something together, right. so I just went with what I already had. Well, sounds good. I love it all. I think it's great. Um, why don't we go ahead and shift gears to cool stuff we found online? Cool stuff we found on line. All right, so here we are. Uh, we this is the uh, Coraline Pink Palace apartment. We'll just uh, plug that really quick. Yes, I think uh, I think Dave is. Morgan hit the live chat earlier with um, with the numbers here, but you're at. 8711 with 94 days left do you get any more opportunities to increase your time or is this the last this no, is the last this is it. the last yeah, three past months push five, yeah this is this is it we're down to the wire so after 5000 5000 is the last extension that you get and then it just then it just dies <laughs> yeah well i what do you think are you hopeful i i feel like I feel like in three months we can get that thing up to ten thousand. <laughs> yeah. Well, I need, I need, I need, I need support. I need, you know, I need. I can only do so much myself. It really takes people sharing it. Trying to find the like a fan base has proved to be pretty, pretty challenging. Uh, there's not, you know, it's not Disney. It doesn't have a huge uh, central, well marketed, well collected fan base. It's, it's definitely a sort of a cult following. Um, and a thing. So yeah, that has proved to be pretty challenging. It does say so. So Lego Ideas has this really neat thing that they added not too long ago, um, which is the statistics. If you look down there and see that statistics tab, you can actually see like where the bumps are. Um, so you can you can kind of figure out what works and maybe what doesn't. Uh, and then it even gives you. Oh, you can't see it. So I can. Is, yeah. Okay. So you would see some insider yeah. uh, stats on your end. That's cool. Yeah. So when I log in, I can see exactly where the big spikes are um, for the days that get a lot of votes. And then it even gives me a trajectory, which at this point says that it should be, if it stays on the same trajectory, it should be there at 10,000 by the end of April. And I think we have until like first or second week of oh, May. Man. <laughs> so really close. All right. All right. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to get this thing going. Yeah. So if, yeah, the, the one big, the one big spike that that I got that was like two thousand votes was uh, at San Diego Comic Con um, when I met uh, Neil Gaiman. Uh -huh. I met Neil Gaiman and he oohed and awed over it and then tweeted about it and that it was like, yeah, it was a big huge boost. Yeah. So if anyone happens to know Neil or knows how to get a hold of him and ask him to do that maybe once or twice more, that I think I think that'll yeah, do it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Otherwise, you get to spam everybody. Well. If yeah. you're watching this video, if you if you're watching live, or if you happen to be one of the people watching this in the replay, please go support Holly's Coraline Pink Palace Apartments. I mean, you know, I feel like it's, of course, gonna hit those Leica fans, and it's got to hit 
a demographic outside of Leica fans <laughs> that just love <laughs> this, you know, beautiful architecture and love the color pink. I, I mean, you know, I just love like whimsical it's funny things. Because I, I, I personally kind of hate the color pink. <laughs> That's definitely not my color. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really funny that this is the first thing I've built that I've put out there and that not people kind of know me for um, because it's, if it weren't for the subject matter, this is, I, I love the architecture. I mean, that's why I wanted to build it because I love architecture and I love the style of the house, but pink would definitely not have been my choice. That was, that was driven by the film. So that is a film reference, not because I just love pink. Um, but yeah, that's there for a reason, but it has been really fascinating. So, so doing all the cons, uh, when I, when I put this out there on ideas, it, I was in between films. So I had rolled on, rolled off on, Kubo and the Two Street. No, I had rolled off on Missing Link actually, um, and it was before Missing Link came out and before I rolled on to the to the next film. I had this time off that I utilized uh, for traveling and going to cons and just kind of did the whole circuit. This was like a year before last, actually, 2018 was when I was um, really campaigning hard for this, and um, and it was kind of a question. Part of the reason I even did this that I even put it out on ideas was to find out what is our fan base? What does our fan base look like? Who are our fans? Who are we making these movies for? Because it's always been a question that no one could really answer um, because they're not really trying to make movies for any one demographic. Um, so it was just a curiosity more than anything. And it was fascinating, like going to all these different cons and then traveling overseas and going to Denmark and meeting fans there it is all over the place. Um, we've got like four and five-year-olds that have to watch this movie every night to go to sleep. There are grown adults that it scared the crap out of that still have nightmares. Um, <laughs> there were 12-year-old uh, boys that, you know, geeked out over it. And I said, really, would you, but would you really buy a bright pink Lego set? And without hesitation, they go, oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Like they were huge fans of the movie and up the studio. Um, I've had people like trying to uh, like drill me on it, you know, trying to make, you know, they'll, oh, but do you have this? And did you get this, you know, little parts of the movie? It's almost like trivia to make sure that I got certain details in there that inevitably actually are in yeah. there. So it becomes a look and find sort of thing. But yeah, it really astonished me the the range of, uh, of fans that they're that there were out there. And then I finally gave up. I think I sent a message to one of the guys in marketing that was like, I don't know how, how you guys do this. Mm. <laughs> Cause I would have no idea yeah. how to market to that wide audience. Yeah. That's wild. Um, Glenn Copeland says to be sure pink palace is a day one purchase. Should it happen? So, so there you oh. go. and uh rye guy 33 Thanks. says, Holly, how easy would it be for Lego to get licensing from Leica? Do you, do you have any idea? Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, that's done. Okay. Yeah, I, I asked. I was, I, that was my first question before, obviously, before I put even put it on ideas. Um, I went and asked them if that was something they would be interested in, if they would, if I, I had to explain how ideas works and said, uh, you know, I've, I've kind of built this thing. For, and actually, at that point, I had only I only had a digital design. I hadn't even built sure. it yet because I have commitment issues and it's <laughs> expensive. And <laughs> I, I like to design things digitally anyway. I like to really plan things out. Um, so I had this design and kind of showed that showed it to them and explained ideas and said, Hey, you know, if I built this and I put this on Lego ideas and, you know, fan, there's enough fan support, it could, it could potentially be made into a set. Is that something you guys would be interested in? Would you want a license with, with uh, Lego? And, uh, it was pretty much like, a uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, I carried on. I just followed through with it. So I, I have almost no doubt that, that like it would be on board. That's awesome. As far as Far as I well, know. Yeah. I, uh, the day I met you, we met at Bricks and Minifigures. Mm -hmm. I remember. On, on yep. Sandy. And yep. you were digging through, I think, looking for parts for maybe your second copy, or is that right? Or, uh, or was, it, was it the original? I don't remember if it may have been. No, I think it was the. I think it was the one, I think it was the original one that was, that I was trying to get done in time for Bricks Cascade. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was like, it, it was like two weeks before Bricks Cascade or something. Yeah. I was in full panic mode. I'm yeah, pretty sure. Yeah. And that's yeah. where we met. Um, 
you know, I, I met Mark Crookshank at Bricks and Minifigs digging through tables. I'm I'm sure yeah. I've met <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I've met other people digging through the tables at Bricks and Minifigs. That that would be a fun thing to yeah. kind of try to reconnect all of my memories to that someday. Anyway, it's not a, not important now. Holy moly, let's um let's dive into the other cool people that we want to talk about, uh, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. So we're gonna start with. Ladies who Lego, and specifically, we've got the Pips original donuts here. That's cool. Yeah, and that was, I. so I used to live over there. That's where I actually just moved away from. So I used to live over in that area for like 13 years. And um, yeah, I remember when there used to like not be lines there even. <laughs> so yeah, uh, no more, no more Pips for me, I don't think. So it was kind of sad actually when I saw that, oh, I miss Pips. But uh, yeah, I thought that was super cool. Oh, that's yeah, it's awesome. I one of my favorite things about this build is is the people that are in line. If you just kind of look, yeah, like if yeah. you sort of look at each very Portland I can get <laughs> further in here. You know. um, but yeah, it's you yeah, know they they've it. just done a great job putting a variety of people in there that look like they you know could be from Portland. So <laughs> nice. Yeah. So this is ladies. Yeah. I think I yeah, this is this is actually Kelly. So it's Kelly and Kat who are who are sisters, and Kelly uh, lives in the Portland area. So she's she's a local, as well. Um, hence the Pips, which is a local donut shop. But I just I just love everything about them. Uh, obviously, we're we're good friends. These were my cabin mates at uh, Scarebuck uh, this past this past year at the Scarebuck Fan Weekend, and we just had a blast. These they're just they're super talented. They're super fun. Um, that Bell Dam right there that you just scrolled past. That's um, yeah, that's Kat's. Uh, it's kind of so I brought her in with some other people for a tour at Leica, and um, I think if you click on that, it even shows you the reference image maybe that she took. So if you scroll, if you go to the next image there and the uh, keep going, oh. yeah. So so she took a picture of that for reference, and I was kind of mad at her for a minute because it was something that I had want, been wanting to do. That was on my list of things I wanted to build was was to do a, a other mother out of out of Bionicle. So we we had chatted about that and then she went and did this amazing thing i was like okay well i'm obviously not going to bother now <laughs> but um i just thought it was so great so i wanted to um i wanted to highlight that as well let's can, can we talk about that for a second because that's something that i know a lot of people wrestle with and i've talked about it on i think i've talked about it on the live stream here before yeah, i've had a lot yeah. of conversation with with people just you know about about creativity and about you know, sharing your ideas and all Ownership. that. What, what, what do you What do you think? Do you have some initial? Um, well, I got over that pretty quickly. I mean, I wasn't really mad at her. I sure. say I was mad at her. I was just, I was just like mad that I didn't have the, the opportunity to do it to do it yeah. first. Is what yeah. it was. Um, obviously, I'm not mad at mad at her for building this. I think it's wonderful, and it's again more attention towards Coraline into the studio. Like, no, I think it's yeah. great. Uh, uh, but yeah, I do, I do struggle with that. It's happened a couple of times now where there's something I've really had my heart set on and have really chewed, you know, I have it in my head. I have it, I've thought through it and I know kind of how I want to do it. That's the problem is it's, it's my fault. I'm really methodic and I'm pretty slow and I think about things too long. And so, yeah, if somebody, somebody beats me to it, then yeah, it's like more power to them for having that capacity to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't really be mad about that about that even if it is an idea i've shared with something somebody i think i posted something about that one day like if you don't want somebody you know um maybe even uh uh not intentionally you know i don't i don't think people often intentionally take other people's ideas but maybe you've talked to somebody about something and it's inspired them to do something you don't want to take that away from right. them but if you don't want them to 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 you know, use your idea or be inspired by your idea, then don't talk yeah, about it. Yeah, <laughs> That's all there is to yeah. it. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's see. We've, so these, these links are in the video description. Um, so you're welcome to check those out. We're going to head on over to Jason Allman. And the one, yeah. the one you wanted to start with, which I just saw the other day and yeah. it is, the, yes. the Falcor. We'll go to the close-up of his face first. So good. So good. Was, yeah, I mean, who, who, yeah, I mean, Never Ending Story is, of course, one of those, uh, like, uh, 
you know, one of those films that I grew up on. So of course it has the nostalgia factor, but I mean, just everything about this is just uh, makes me so happy. It makes me so, when yeah. I saw this, I just, I just, I was grinning from ear to ear. Like that is so clever and so wonderful and yeah. just so fantastic. And it makes me so happy. And then I saw him um, in Denmark and he brought the, he brought this to Scarebook. So I saw it in person and it was the same reaction. As soon as, you know, I'm walking by, I saw that and I just was just giddy. I just love it so much. Yeah, I um and Chris is just a phenomenal builder. He just blows my mind what the his mechanics and everything he builds is wonderful. Yeah, he's so. he's really like I you know, I I just believe that like he is the brains behind so many uh, you know, iconic things that work, right? Um, right. And, and just that, like that video that he has, and he has a, uh, he has more than one of them, but the video where he's got the box with the switches and the things mm -hmm. and, the, and it's, yeah. it's like so silly and in yeah. some way so simple conceptually, but it's I'm sure incredibly, elegant. incredibly complex from a programming yeah. standpoint, from, uh, you know, from a, a design standpoint of the machine, the, uh, you know the the gears and machinery itself, um, and it's just it's just so brilliant. And then the way like yeah. his video ends and he's just like, you know, he walks off. I, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, yeah. I love that stuff. Okay. Hey. Yeah, I love I love the the yeah the elegant solutions that he comes up for things, especially working in these you know these tight spaces, really small. Uh, it's just so inspiring. It's like oh look what you can do with with in such a little, you know, so little in such a little space. I just think, yeah, the, the elegance of it is just genius. I, and he's such a nice guy. Like all of the people that I, that I had, all the builders and things that I picked were people that I just genuinely people I like, you yeah. know, <laughs> but of course they're phenomenal builders as well. You, you just got to love yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, it's such awesome stuff. All right. Yeah. I'm engaging our time. I feel like we've got to move on a little okay. bit. If you, um, I'll just quickly, I'll just real quickly say that if you uh, would like to submit uh, an idea of your own or an idea of someone you know to be considered, uh, you know, for feature on April Spotlight Live in the future, you can get there by hitting boonbuilds.com slash submit. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, I'll get ideas, I'll get future ideas from there, you know, for things for this segment, the cool stuff we've seen online. I'll get ideas from there for future guests to have on the show. Um, so you can find that at boonbuilds.com slash submit. And Holly, I hate to do this to you, but if you had to pick, if you had to pick from Rocco, oh, Jonas, gosh, no. or, well, should we just go along? Should we just like say? No, <laughs> I'm not picking. No, All right, All right yeah. real quick. So we got Rocco, and let's just go to his, um, this one. Here we go. This is like the one big overview of the, the, what, do you know what scale? Does he call this a particular scale, or? I think it's just micro scale. Micro. As far as I know, he has some fancy word for it, but as far as that, he builds a lot of micro scale, uh, and, and particularly architecture. That's kind of his, his thing, and he does it like no one else. I mean, it's just. Everything he makes is mind blowing. Would you call this Microme? No? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's exactly what it I gotta is. Start, I gotta start getting in. Uh, I gotta good. start getting in my my cheesy jokes. You know how? Uh, yeah, you gotta go in there and look at all the detail. Though, like again, if you just click through that in that one photo, if you if you they're stacked. So if you go through some of those and you start to see some of the detail in there, it's just amazing um and i've been there i've been to rome i've been to italy italy has a special place in my heart that was uh uh i went to, i went there during my formative years when i was really into art um and just thought i was gonna live there and study art there that was my dream when i was in like high school so florence and italy and all those uh places are really awesome so i every time i see things like this it just yeah it makes my heart swell i think it's wonderful yeah, yeah. awesome cool and he's also a very nice guy. Yeah, that's that's great. I love it when you know I, that's when people ask me who my favorite builders are. I always you know I always default to those people who are incredible builders, and also like super chill about it. You know, and like really fun to yeah. hang out with, and like they're just you know anyway those those are the, those are the ones I recognize. So uh, this is Rocco, and you can find a link to his Instagram in the uh, the the links below. 
Here we have Jonas Krom. Um, just so just good. amazing stuff. Just amazing stuff. I want to get to some Q and A, so we're just going to give you a little bit, a little taste here. But of course, you know the um, the the Western Saloon from the Bricklink ADP. So I uh, you know had a wonderful time in the the ADP uh, online forums with with Jonas, and he's just man done some really beautiful stuff. Yeah, those Game of Thrones are probably my favorite yeah, yeah, builds yeah, yeah. of his. This is, look at this. Yeah. Elegant. A lot of me mechanics in a really tight spot, and oh, I just think that's fantastic. I should mute this. I should mute this. Oh, uh -oh it's playing music. No, now, yeah. Oh, that's now, it. now the this no one's ever going to get to watch <laughs> this live stream because of that three seconds Jeez. of the Game of Thrones theme song. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, awesome. So there we go, Jonas. <laughs> and then, uh, real quick, we'll just go to we've got a Lego Ideas set here. Uh, Lego Ideas project rather called ruined house how'd you find this holly uh that just popped up today in our like local uh it was either perry that shared davy davy posted it and perry shared it i'm not i don't remember it it popped up like in three places kind of all at once um and uh just so happened you know we were looking for things that were cool and i was like that's pretty cool so there you yeah, go this is, this is beautiful <laughs> look at this i love that tree that tree is awesome I mean, there's a lot of awesome things going. Obviously, the 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 chipped paint is a really nice yeah. technique. I think I've seen anywhere. I don't recall having seen that in anywhere well, else. Using, um, but I do love that. Are they using tiles really cool. there? They're using those angled the new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that what that is, or are they slopes? No, I'm, I'm pretty um, sure. Like, I, if no, you those look at, be tiles. If you look at, uh, man, if you look at this angled are, one, yeah. yeah, they're they're those they're the new yeah. angled tiles. I'm like. It's hard to see mm -hmm. in the render here. It's hard to see the seams, which makes it a little bit more difficult to, to tell what they are. But, oh, yeah, this is beautiful. Look at this. Yeah. It's oh, cool. it's awesome. And the, the printed, the wood printed, hanging down like the beams of the house are kind of breaking through. Yeah. And I always hate to say, like, whenever I'm critiquing, like, ideas, um, submissions, I always hate to say, like, you know, that... I don't see it becoming a set because you really never know. I mean, anything, anything stands, anything that, that gets 10,000 votes has an you know equal opportunity to become a set. But this is one of those things where I, I have a hard time really picturing it as a retail set, but you never know what the designers could do with it. You know, they could do some kind of modification to this to, to make it fit that mold a little bit better. So as you know, always keep in mind with ideas that these are just proof, proof of concept. So as a proof of concept, I think it's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Totally. Thanks for yeah. thanks for uh, bringing this one up for us. Okay, we are going to go ahead and head into our Q and A session of the evening. So everybody, drop your questions, your Qs, and your As. No, you give us the Qs. We'll give you the As. Uh, oh, questions. Can I? What was that? Can I see them? Where did the Where did the chat oh, yeah, go? That's that's you. Give me just a moment. I'm gonna go back to here. And I'm going to give you the live chat so that you can see that. And how about now? Do you see it? I see awesome. it. Awesome. So we'll go back to us. Uh, we I saw a question much earlier in the live chat from uh, Brick Lettuce. And he said, I think it was directed mm -hmm. to me, which means, Holly, you must already be going. You're going to Brick Can? I am going to Brick Can. He, yes, it's official. He asked me, he said, Boone, are you going to Brick Can? And again, I missed out before uh, the the window closed. Um, and honestly, I just, I have a I have a hard time, <laughs> just with my family schedule, I have a hard time planning early yeah. enough in advance to get those tickets for such an exclusive event. And Brick Can, I, I said it the other day in a video, Brick Can is definitely in my my top list of cons that I want to get to, but it's going to take a year, I think, when when I can somehow uh, plan in much further in advance than I'm generally able to plan. Yeah, um, that was that was 2018 for me. In fact, I, I, and I, it wasn't even a matter of planning; it was just availability. Same thing. I've got two kids, a full time job. Um, that's that's one of the challenges with this hobby, yeah. for sure, is just making time to not just build, but make time for the community, make time to display and travel. It's like it's a lot, and uh, yeah, no hobby should should cause this much anxiety, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, no. <laughs> it's 
God, what are you building? And are you coming to the cod? And you're just like, ah, just leave me alone. I want to relax. Uh, uh, that's what this is supposed to be. We're supposed to do this to relax from everything else. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I only went to three cons this past year, and it, that was Brick's Cascade, which is our, our local one, of course, which I wouldn't miss, and then Brick Can, and then the Scarebook, and uh, I felt pretty fulfilled. Those are really good cons to go to. Yeah. We're going to only pick a couple. So, Brick Lettuce, let's talk. Uh, I'll, I think I've put my name on the waiting list. If not, I'll check to see if I've put my name on the waiting list, and I'll do that. And, uh, and, and I know I've been telling you. I feel so bad. I've been telling him that I would come years. for like uh, five years or something like that. And it's just, it's just, uh, it's okay. I want to go. Believe me. Elizabeth A. Thank you so much. Elizabeth A. Donated $2 uh, to the April spotlight live chat. This helps me make this thing keep going. And eventually I'll be able to kick some of that over to people like Holly for being, uh, for being gracious <laughs> guests Right. Elizabeth said, "Favorite theme for each of you." Elizabeth, do you mean, do you mean like like favorite theme or favorite set? So I saw a question for favorite set. Well, I Elizabeth said too. favorite theme. Uh, but my question for Elizabeth, we're gonna, I'm gonna answer your question with a question. Do you mean like favorite theme that Lego has produced, like that you could buy off the shelf, like that, or do you mean like the favorite kind of theme that you might build for for a convention? Obviously, a lot of those overlap, but some of them don't. So. Maybe let us know what you think there. Um, and uh, did someone ask? Let's see, Holly. Yeah, Stuart Shaw. Yeah, Stuart Shaw asked for favorite Lego set, which that's easy. The Haunted Mansion is my favorite. Uh, I think I told you about that at one point where really my first real mock was trying to make a haunted house because Lego seemed to refuse to come out with one. I kept waiting and waiting for them to come out with a haunted house and finally decided I was going to build my own. That was what, 2011, I guess, was really kind of my first, my first what I would consider a mock. Um, and then I think the Haunted House for Monster Fighters came out the next oh, year. Oh, y'all, um, was... stick around to see that because Holly sent me those pictures and we haven't shown them yet. Uh, but we'll show that in a minute. We'll answer a couple of other questions. Um, <laughs> I just dissect a bunch of my old sets. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Uh, my Man, my all-time favorite for many, many years has been the Black Seas Barracuda. Um, Benny's spaceship made me question, and maybe that is like in my top three now. The new the new Keaton Batmobile, the Burton Batmobile, the oh, giant yeah. one. Oh my gosh, I Number love two. it. I love it so much. Yeah. And I said, I yeah. said when I built it, I, I sent um, I sent in, in a message to Chris, one of the designers on that set, and I said, you have just dethroned yeah. my favorite set that has been my favorite set for, for, for 30 years. And so so yeah. if, if pushed, I will have to back up the fact that I told one of the set designers that it, that it has become my favorite set. Um, I haven't actually... It yet. It's amazing. So maybe when I build it, it'll be my number it's one. It's amazing. But... There are things in there that just make you go like, what? Which, yeah, you know, uh, man, we could have a whole session just about that, that set. Okay. Totally. Batman is the next episode, because I can talk about Batman well, all day. I'm a huge Batman Elizabeth, fan. <laughs> Elizabeth said either. So she said either your favorite official Lego theme or your favorite like theme to build for for a convention. Uh, you, you, do you need to think about yours for a second? Um, I don't know if it counts as a theme, but I probably have to go with the collectible minifigures okay. would probably be my favorite. Okay. Thing. That's a lot of bang for your buck right there. And it just, it just, it's endlessly, uh, it's endlessly, um, satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Mine would be like, uh, space. And I'll tell you, like when I was a kid, I loved Mtron. I loved ice planet. Um, I actually, you know, I had booklets from like the mid eighties when, you know, or like pre Futuron. So like still classic space, but I, I mean, I don't know. I think some people probably are like 1979 is like classic space and it got sort of weird toward like 80, what six or something like that. But, um, I had booklets when I was a kid that had that stuff in it and I wanted it so bad, but it was no longer on the shelves. So I have a I have a Aww. I have a great appreciation for classic space, but I didn't actually have any as a kid. Um, 
so so you, those ones I mentioned are the ones that really hit me. But really, anything space. I love um, the uh, the retro Spaceman minifig that came out with series 17. Oh, you can see the big helmet that I made. That that's that's his helmet. Oh yeah. And um, let me see if I can just. Oh, this is dangerous. But I built a new sort of outpost just last Saturday for that, to go with that rocket ship. We showed that, that rocket ship. I love that that keeps growing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, a lot of a lot of what we showed a couple of years ago for that um, has been taken apart. Sorry, I'm trying to fix my webcams here now, but um, a lot of that has been taken I apart, like... and uh, but it, it's fun to kind of keep those things alive. This is kind of cool, actually. It's just... Uh, Steven, Steven Yo built this for me, which I thought was pretty cool. It's got the, the gray, yeah. the little yeah, spaceman. I love that. That was a pretty special use the, use, gift use right there. Use the rocket there. ship to, or use the rocket yeah. ship costume to become a rocket ship. That's cute. Yeah, it was, it was actually supposed to be on a little thing that, that makes it spin around. Uh, it was something I, ha I had momentarily during Dirty Brickster and Brick Can, and I was so, so happy, and then I was so, so sad when somebody took it away. Yeah, oh. So... <laughs> So he built me another one. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. I yeah. love it. All right. Yeah. Uh, oh, maybe they're answering. People are answering each other's question. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, and Nico good. says, if Leica and Lego were to partner up to make your dream movie, what would it be? Oh, gosh. To make my dream movie, it would probably be another, like, Neil Gaiman story uh, and a lot of those have already been made and for TV uh, Sandman I guess it'd okay. probably be do Sandman that's awesome off the somebody, top of my somebody head mentioned, somebody yeah. mentioned Sandman earlier in the in the chat hmm. did they really? Oh, I must yes. have yes um, that was, that was I was kind of into that comic book when I was really young I, yeah, I've been a Neil Gaiman fan since I was like really young so uh yeah, something along those lines. Oh, I promised you all images of Holly's uh, <laughs> uh, haunted house, and I saved them all to a secret location that I now can't that you remember. Can't. <laughs> Let's see, Holly. Uh, Holly, will you look at a uh, Dalen Powell's question there and see if that's something we can field? Uh, what's a discontinued theme you would like to see Lego bring back in modern form? Oh, um, that's a tricky one because I would say castle, but I, I guess they've sort of kind of done that, um, arguably with, you know, Lord of the Rings and the Nexo Knights. Like, I guess they're bringing that back in modern forms and I don't know how into that. I, I, I mean, I am into that. I'll take, yeah, I mean, I'll totally take some more like Lord of the Rings type stuff. Um, but we need more castles i feel like there's a kind of a big hole for that that seems the obvious choice to me and pharaoh's quest was pretty cool i sort of missed out on a lot of the pharaoh's quest uh theme um so that had some cool parts that i'd like to see again that's all I, again all i can think of off the top of my head cool 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 <laughs> all right here we go let me see if i can get to the beginning of this thing why is this Man, there's just so many. Monorail, so yeah. Many, good call. So Bob, Bob says monorail, obviously. I don't know if that really counts as, a, as like a discontinued theme, but sure, yes, definitely monorail. Yeah, you know, you have another. they showed the monorail in episode one of Lego Masters, and there's all these people that were like, "Is was it, was it, the teaser. New, was it new uh -huh. gray or old gray? And, you know, wondering, like, what, did they manufacture new pieces and, like, could it be coming? And, um... I, and? Well, I have no idea. It, I uh, I remember uh, thinking it looked very old, like it was someone's old track that had been run, yeah, you know, many, many, many yeah. times. Okay, we're gonna switch over to the haunted house here. Holly, tell us about this. What's the significance here? Uh, well, yeah, like I said, I just I really want to. I'm a monster kid. I love monsters. I love creepy stuff. And um, I think I even had some old, you know, uh, some old Lego, you know, Wolfman and Vampire and all that. And they needed they needed a place to live. And I just somehow I just anticipated that Lego was going to eventually come out with a haunted house set. And I don't know how many people end up mocking that way. I would suspect a lot. 
where you're just like, I really wish Lego would make this thing. And then all of a sudden it occurs to you, oh, right, it's Lego. I can build my own. And that's all that it, that's all there was to it. So I had my old uh, uh, castle from when I was a kid. So that's where the molded base plate came from. And I just started, uh, I went and bought a Hogwarts castle actually just, just to do this mock because it had all the turrets and stuff that I needed. Um, so yeah, that was the first time I bought a set just for the yeah. parts and um, used some of it. Like I kind of went through and built sections that I liked uh, by the by the book and and uh, pieced it together with some old some of my own old castle and pirate sets that I had. And there you go, I had my own little haunted haunted castle. I love it. So and you and you <laughs> you said this was basically like your first mock kind of getting yeah. back yeah. into it as an adult, right? Is that yeah, when, basically. When, when yeah. do you think that was? Uh, I think it was 2011. I want to say that was, that, yeah, I think my daughter was like maybe three at that point. So she, that was about the point that she was getting in, you know, I was getting her into Lego as well. So It's so awesome. I love it. It's There's yeah. so many little things I love about it. It's just how easy it is to see those pieces that I re that I remember from when I was a kid, right? And then, and then obviously, like, you can see those Hogwarts pieces. Um, and just all like so many cute little things that you, you, you know, you've got that, that bar across the big doors. That's just slightly askew. Yeah. Right. And, and, um, and this guy, tell me about the guy hooked up to the chains there. Yeah. You know, I thought the coolest thing. So that, so that, that castle, I wish I knew the number for it. It's the castle that came with a little glow in the dark ghost that I was just giddy about when I got as a kid. Um, one of one of my favorite things about that set was that it had a dungeon. It had just this really simple, you know, little uh, plate that you could lift up. And then there's this uh, uh, recessed area in that molded base plate that is basically supposed to be, you know, kind of a dungeon or whatever. And I just thought that was the greatest thing ever. So when I was building my own castle, of course, I had to have, you know, like a torture chamber dungeon of some sort that I could play play up. Yeah, that's my favorite. I, I, I <laughs> love it. And I, I, I love that molded base plate that's like such... You know, kind of an yeah. iconic thing from from our childhood. I, yeah. It's cool. That's the thing we need to bring back. That's <laughs> those, that's a discontinued thing that needs to come back. Are the molded base plates? I'm a sucker for those for sure. Yeah. Well, Holly, it has been such a pleasure. We have gone about ten minutes longer than I than I Sorry. like to go, but we have we have not lost the viewership. So people must be enjoying it. Oh, Richard is in in the live chat. Richard, oh, Flynn, and, hey Richard. Flynn and Richard, thank you for watching. It was the haunted house yeah, that got them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was going to bring them up that there's something about this reminded me of, you know, of, of them of course, the 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 type of themes that they like to build in. Oh, this is great. I don't want it to end. Uh, I, but I do, I do Aww. need to go spend some time with my family. Holly, thank you so much yeah. for joining us this evening. Thanks, guys. Thank you all in the live chat. Molly, uh, Duncan, Perry, uh, I'm a bird, Ben Khan, Josh Gay, Richard and Flynn, uh, who else is still with us? The True Dark Jedi, Britzar, um, Jeff, uh, McElloy. We've got, oh man, this has been such a fun time. Thank you all so much for engaging each other in the live chat. And uh, thank you for bringing your thoughts and your ideas and your questions. And y'all get together with some fellow AFOLs because yeah, this, the, we'll see you at the we'll con. We'll see you at, at Brick's Cascade in, it's two weeks away. Uh, oh, it, no, it is, it is. I, I hate <laughs> the idea, but it, it is, it's true. Uh, so we'll see you there. Mm -hmm. If you're watching from somewhere else, find your local lug, uh, connect with somebody. Don't get discouraged in this thing. I know it's sometimes it's hard, um, but but just keep your your mind and your spirit open to the creativity that you find uh, with with inspirations around you. And uh, and and until next time, build on. Holly, thanks again. This is a full spotlight. Thanks, Bill. thanks guys. Bye. Let's go! Time aboard this proverbial Winnebago. We're talking about the awesome fans of Lego. So build your mock and ship it into drive. Super fun. It's time for a full spotlight. Live. Should I hang up? <laughs> uh, give me just a second. I think it just ended. 
I usually let it roll for an extra couple seconds or it'll cut okay. it off early. 